Hi friends and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I know that you're going to have some questions and we're going to cover a lot of material. So I ask that you be patient and wait and see if your questions aren't answered somewhere down the road. Um, you're always welcome to post them. But uh, like I said, we're going to cover a lot, and in the coming weeks, we may address your question if we don't do it right away. So stay tuned, and we'll get started with Lesson 1. What is digitizing? Digitizing, simply put, is the process of creating a machine stitch design from an image. In my humble opinion, it's an art form. A digitizer uses software to transform a drawing to a series of stitches that an embroidery machine, such as ours, can stitch out. Now the reason we're all here together is because of AutoPunch. An AutoPunch is software that's proprietary for Singer embroidery machines. It's comparable to other embroidery software products, as you're going to see later on in our training. But the main thing about AutoPunch is it's designed to streamline the process of creating embroidery files so that even the simple home user can create beautiful designs. So how does it work? Well, if you begin with the proper image, AutoPunch will automatically create a digitized embroidery file and the finished file can be um, a format that almost any common embroidery machine, foreign or domestic, can read. Of course, there is a caveat. There always is, right? Some skill is required to use the software and a good bit of background knowledge to produce a satisfactory result. And this is where some of you have been running into some issues. But anyway, are you ready to give it a try? Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Which image is best, the cute penguin, the adorable owl, or the sweet little turtle, A, B, or C? Not all images are suitable for digitizing with AutoPunch. The best images are clip art that has distinctly colored attributes, a high resolution, sharp edges, and smooth paths. So did any of these three images meet all the criteria? Look again at your selection and ask yourself, is this the best image? Many times we try to digitize an image that's not suitable and then we're unhappy with the results. And in truth, none of these three images were ideal. Surprised? Okay, so the penguin's really cute. What's wrong with him? Well, first of all, if you look very closely, you'll notice that he's not a solid black. There are little bubbles, like on his forehead, on the tip of his nose, on the sides of his feet. And those can look very awkward when you try to digitize. In fact, they may leave holes or they may not stitch at all. And did you notice his eyes? They're not really symmetrical. Kind of cookie, huh? Okay, so the owl is probably my favorite. What's wrong with him? Well, he is better. But the problem lies in his coloring. Um, his chest is not clearly differentiated from his back and from the white dots. In fact, when the image is reduced, these colors might all blend together. And also, the dots are a problem. There's so many of them, and if the image is fairly small, which it looks like it might be, um, it would be very difficult to clip the jump stitches between all of those dots. It might be unsatisfactory. And then it would just look like a bunch of connected dots. Again, unsatisfactory. And his feet are going to stitch out like three straight lines, which might be okay for some other kind of a bird. But you would imagine that an owl, a bird of prey, is going to have more of a rounded claw foot. And I just don't like the look of those three lines, frankly. I don't think it's going to produce the best result.
So by now you might be thinking, she's really picky. What about the turtle? What's wrong with him? There can't be much wrong with him, right? But actually, the turtle had a lot of problems. First of all, he was black and white. And if you tried to color him just with the paint bucket and paint or something, he'd still be all one color. If you notice that there's a couple of lines that aren't quite joined in his head and another one where his tail meets his shell, and that could be a problem in trying to color him. Um, and the lines themselves are a problem because they're all sort of wavy and uneven. And that might render a, a wobbly looking line when it's stitched out. Or some of the lines might be so small that they don't stitch out at all. So what sort of image works best? To tell you the truth, at least for Auto Punch, vector graphics are the best. Vectors are images created with points instead of pixels. And get this, Auto Punch stitches from point to point. Et voila! So a vector image is made up of polygons instead of pixels. It's sort of a mathematical image, if you will. And each polygon is composed of numbers of points. The points define a path, and each path has definite attributes. Now, the thing that's really good about vector images is no matter how large or small you make them, they don't lose their quality. Can you see how that would be important for your embroidery design? And when you see vectors saved online when you're out searching for them, you typically see a vector saved as an SVG. And a lot of people recognize those as cut files for the home cutting machines or a WMF. And you will probably recognize that from old Microsoft clip art because most of those were WMF files. But if you want the really long explanation that goes into great depth about it, the site 99designs has a great explanation of the differences in images. And I've got the URL there for you. So you have some options. You can always draw your own images, but what if you're not artistic? Well, that's okay, because most people aren't. But you simply need to be aware of what to look for. And keep in mind that AutoPunch can read a variety of image types. You can always search for free vector images. That's the ones with the extension WMF. Or AutoPunch can also convert BMP and JPEG and many other image files. Just keep in mind how the software operates to determine the best images to use. And remember that drawn images are superior to pixelated ones. And you can play around with various ones to get a little experience and see why some of them are better than others. And finally, just remember AutoPunch has a drawing package. You can use it to edit clip art images, to draw your own images, or even open an imported drawing such as one a child might make. And remember, a free image isn't always quote unquote free or even legal. Uh, you need to be very careful about that. To legally use free clip art images, you must look for the words royalty free, even though you have to pay for it. And you need to find images that are labeled for reuse with modification. Luckily, Google can help with your search. So once you bring up Google and you put in your search terms, as you can see, I put in free clip art dog cartoon. Then you want to click tools, more, and label for reuse with modification. That's how you can find the ones that are truly free and you're, you can use them in any way you want. So here's your first assignment. I want you to create a new folder on your computer and name it whatever you like, digitize, or something that you can find again. And go out this week and search for free images that you like, some that you think would be really well suited for digitizing, and save them in this folder, as many as you like. 
and then select the best ones in the folder um, for this class and prepare to discuss them this week with everyone in the group. Okay? Now that you've done the assignment, I want you to think about your aha moments for this week. Think about the clip art that you thought was good to digitize and then post to the group any thoughts you have about your aha moments, some of your clip art, some questions you have, and maybe some problems you solved after this week's training. Thanks and we'll see you soon.